I wish to thank the state of Hamburg and Ursula de Berta for inviting me to deliver my opinions on how the Church of Scientology handles its external critics. The brief answer is that Scientology handles critical messages by attacking and trying to destroy the messenger with denials, deception, distraction and defamation. However, the messenger must first be personally identified before the messenger is personally destroyed. The great success of Anonymous has been anonymity. The Anonymous mask has become the external critic's free speech foil against the cult. The anonymous movement against the criminal and abusive behaviour of the Scientology enterprise began in mid-January 2008 with the publication of Andrew Morton's book on Tom Cruise and the anonymous internet release of a 2004 Scientology recruiting video featuring, featuring Tom Cruise. Anonymous criticised the Scientology racketeering enterprise for many of the same reasons that were recently stated in the Australian Parliament by Federal Senator Xenophon. He called the Church of Scientology a criminal organization. In my opinion and experience, Senator Xenophon and the anonymous movement are correct. The Church of Scientology is an international criminal, psychoterror, and hate group. When anonymous made public statements that criticized the Scientology enterprise, and as totalitarian tyrant David Miscavige, it committed what Scientology calls a suppressive act. And Anonymous became suppressive persons or SPs. Scientology teaches that real SPs are monsters and utterly nuts. Hubbard also wrote that SPs are about 2.5% of the population and they are to be eliminated, exterminated quietly and without sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Is <laughs> the Scientology enterprise may be unique among criminal organizations in that it has written copyrighted suppressive person policies and practices on how to destroy and eliminate anyone who dares to publicly criticize its real activities and agenda. The suppressive person policy letters a part criminal manifesto and conspiracy, part psychoterror manifesto and part sedition and treason. There are dozens of such copyrighted documents and today I focus upon a few that are identified in the endnotes to this paper. In the 1996 Scientology policy letter, Attacks on Scientology, Scientologists are instructed upon the correct procedure for handling criticism. There are six major commands. First, identify the attacker. Second, investigate the attacker. Third, suggest others investigate the attacker. Fourth, and I quote, start feeding lurid, blood, sex, crime evidence on the attackers to the press. Fifth, and again I partially quote, make it rough on the attackers. Sixth, forget about being sued for defamation. We investigate and the attack ceases, wrote L. Ron Hubbard. However, Hubbard did not envisage the emergence of the anonymous protests against the Scientology's religious and political mafia. The brilliance of the anonymous matrix is that it short circuits the Scientology suppressive person policies and practices. Scientology cannot investigate, attack and destroy what at first cannot identify. Within the closed Scientology society, the task of handling outside criticism is the responsibility of the Church of Scientology's Office of Special Affairs, or OSA. OSA is divided into three main divisions, public relations, investigations, and legal. The copyrighted practices of the investigation section are horrifying, particularly for a tax-exempt church. You can read the 1991 Investigations Officer Training Course, or Hat Pack, of Frank Oliver on the internet. The Training Course, or Hat Pack, for the President of Church of Scientology International is even more horrific 
It includes many of the same policies and practices of the old Guardian's office, the B1, B2 hat back. When the anonymous movement burst upon the Scientology scene in early 2008, with over, over 9,000 protesters <laughs> on the streets of over 40 nations, OSA was ambushed and fleeing. Where did the thousands of new protesters come from? They had to be identified, investigated, and utterly destroyed. As a warning to others, not to stand in the way of Scientology's agenda for total worldwide domination and the extermination of all critics, quietly and without sorrow. In 1945, Europe pledged never to let such a thing happen again. In 1993, the United States Treasury Department was extorted into granting Scientology tax-free status to finance such activities. And the United States Department of State and Treasury was directed to pressure all foreign governments to do the same. The United States government also assumed contractual responsibility for blocking any international police or Interpol activity against the Scientology enterprise. The United States Departments of Treasury and State continue to advance the Scientology agenda around the world while the FBI and the INS have been muted and sit impotently upon the sidelines, ignoring all manner of blatant illegality, civil rights breaches, and human rights violations. The United States official blind eye to Scientology crime, abuse, and psychoterror has filtered down to the states where police departments and local governments have been compromised by Scientology lies, deception, and corruption. Strangely, the record demonstrates that United States government officials are willing to fight Islamic extremism and terror abroad, but they are terrified and unwilling to fight Scientology extremism and psychoterror at home. Anonymous now has to do it for them. And they do it daily in over 110 cities and 42 countries. One can read the daily breaking news on the battle against Scientology extremism on whywheprotest.net, xenu.net, or the ex-Scientologist message board, to name but, a, but three of perhaps hundreds of relevant internet sites. Scientology had never confronted such a situation before, and it has been overwhelmed. The Scientology enterprise responded to the anonymous exposure of damaging information, condemnation, and protest demonstrations, as it always does, by hiring lawyers, private investigators, and covert agents. A former senior United States Department of Justice prosecutor at one of the world's largest law firms, Latham and Watkins, was hired to work with the Scientology in-house lawyers. A large number of other law firms were also hired for the same work. <laughs>